Testing one, two, three. Hi guys. Hey, we got it working now. Good to see us. So is my is my picture changed since the last time, or not? No, it's good. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Hey, and I appreciate you talking with us and sitting through all this difficulties. Oh this no, no, first, I've please. I've got our first interview, me. so yeah. <laughs> worse than this. I've I've done entire interviews where um we were we were the other side was recording and deliberately and they hit the wrong button and so oh. i had to do the interview again for like an hour. <laughs> that was fun i mean that that reaction at the end where they're like they're hitting stuff it's like oh no they're like oh we didn't get any so we of didn't it. we didn't get it and so it's like ah oh, great so that's fine anyway that's so what's uh where do you guys want to start what do you want yeah to so we're doing like i said in the email we're doing a group project on different like views in science on different theories of like how the world works and kind of like so obviously having seen behind the curve on netflix yeah we knew of you i was actually kind of stunned when you uh <laughs> when you replied to me we, i figured we'd reach out to you but uh oh no no i i any any university i mean i reply to most people anyway but mm -hmm. anybody that's tied to anything that's university age or younger pff, in yeah. fact i just i did a um louisiana high school just an hour ago really yeah that's awesome yeah. so i do yeah. i do classrooms actually more often than than i thought did university of arkansas last week Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so university of tennessee you can check that one off right on uh, yeah i have not done tennessee <laughs> there we go so we'll start with an easy one i guess a curveball yeah. what is flat earth theory dun, dun, dun. okay flat earth theory is basically that you are you think you're living on a tiny little rock covered with water and smoke flying through space at impossible velocities and an and endless universe which again doesn't make any sense um what we're uh, saying what is saying. that you yeah. are living in a snow globe, a planetarium, uh, a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and okay. even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until about 1960. And so it's not even a, a really an old conspiracy. And when they figured it out, the United States and the Soviet Union, they decided to keep it under wraps for as long as possible. And until they could get an infrastructure built to where they could just you know tell everybody at the same time was the general public ready for it in 1960 no no they weren't uh are they ready for it now yeah they are uh we've got an infrastructure with high speed internet um social media six billion smartphones i think we can we can address this pretty easily now yeah well you mentioned there i want to talk about could you explain maybe the differences between i mean like obviously back in the I don't even know. A thousand years ago, people yeah. thought the Earth was flat, and then you said that it wasn't an old uh, theory, but rather than a new one. So could yeah, you yeah, yeah. So back in the day, and you can look these up. Uh, none, of the, none of it's secret information. There was you could if you Googled something called ancient cosmology, you'll see that everybody thought they saw the same thing, and that is if you see the stars moving overhead, obviously they're moving and not us and so everybody drew the same thing i don't care if it was viking culture or east indian or native american or aborigine tribes they all drew the same thing which was some sort of snow globe some sort yeah. of building that's what they always drew and that stayed the same for most of our history and i don't care if people argue about the greeks <laughs> screw the greeks um, all the way up until about 500 years ago, and that's when the heliocentric model got put into play, the solar system model by Copernicus. Mm -hmm. And you're referring to, yeah, Copernicus. Yeah, Copernicus. And uh, that's when everything changed, and that's when science started building, building up its institution. And for the last five centuries, that's what science did. They pushed this out there. It's like, okay, we're in a solar system model, everything is spheres, and that's how it is. And that got a lot of traction. What was interesting about that, though, is that there was no way to prove it. You know, up until if you don't have a space program, and I don't care what you do with geometry. Until you have a space program, you don't know anything. So there was, that was one of the questions I put out there. There's a lot of stuff that wasn't put in the documentary, obviously, because you can only do so much in 100 minutes. Which was, okay, if, if NASA wasn't even founded okay. until 1958, how did everybody in the world know in 1957 that it was a globe? wasn't that they knew it was that they were told and that's basically the 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 long and short of it it was uh did you lose me for a second yeah, yeah. we lost you for about 30 seconds there oh no <laughs> what was i talking about yeah 
sorry, I'm sorry. What was the question again? No, we were talking about uh, the difference between flat Earth and ancient flat Earth, and we got to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. uh, the, the short version is this: is that uh, up until until you have a space program, what do you really know? What do you really know? How do you really know? In fact, uh, George Orwell, who wrote 1984, said this wonderful quote. In fact, let me kill off my email just so I can make sure I get rid yeah. of all bad. That's what that we all, did. We just closed off the email to make sure it's good. To, yeah, we'll make sure we don't lose anything here. Um, so how, George Orwell said it was really interesting. He wrote this in 1946. He said, how did everybody in the world know that it's a globe? You could ask anyone on the street. He is, and the first impulse is always the same, which is what well, we just know. Duh. Everyone knows this. Like, how do you know? And then people get mad if you push that to them. And they know they don't know. That was just it. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So, And the reason is because there's a globe sitting in your classroom from the time you were six until at least the time you graduate from high school. It's 12 years. Of sitting in your classroom and that's it it's not that you know that it's a globe you're told that it's a globe and that's that's how it goes and and so that's the 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 big so yes it is a recent conspiracy as of late but it was all but for most of our civilization that's what people believed it's actually very very recent that uh, that all of the world even got on board with it again remember 500 years ago the majority of the mm -hmm. population couldn't even read and write yeah. So we, we, you guess. just tell people this again. It is I use the line from the Truman Show, and that is we believe the world that is presented to us, it, which is why again, if you want to see an, a really weird movie, go watch The Village by M Night Shyamalan. It's actually a good movie. Yeah, where he where basically they tell you tell the kids. Here's the interesting part about the movie: you tell the kids that it's the 1800s and you're living in a community in a forest and there's monsters outside. Well, when those parents die, because it was the parents that knew it wasn't true. Technically, when the parents die, nobody's lying anymore. It's all true. Everybody in that town could pass a lie detector test. So yeah. again, we the, the truth, the lie becomes the reality. Sorry. Okay. Well, I guess you're kind of just leading in for me. What yeah. motivation like would there be for NASA or I don't know, like the world government yeah, to come why? together? And At least one out of every 10 people ask me that. Why? Why, yeah. why would you do it? And well, yeah. it, it was like, what would they have to gain? That's what most people think. It's like, no, no, it's not what you have to gain. It's what you have to lose. Because remember, we're talking about if you don't figure this out until 1960, your civilization's built. All the infrastructure is already there. You're just trying to hold on to what you have. So think about what happens if you tell people in 1960. It's a three, three things could go wrong, and they're all horrible. Uh, first would be academic. Every university in every state and every country would be turned upside down. Uh, libraries would have to be emptied out because uh, forget about astronomy and astrophysics. Think of all the remaining physical sciences, uh, biology, hydrology, geology, archaeology. They would literally have to be rebuilt. That's just yeah. academia. I mean, it would just be chaos. Um, world markets, uh, world stock markets have to be suspended for months. I mean, for God's sake, look what the coronavirus is doing <laughs> to, the, is to the markets, it's right? Like that's be... just a freaking bug. Mm -hmm. You do this, the markets just they panic in the streets, potentially. But the big one is the, the religious side, which is you're telling the five major religious houses of the world, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. You're telling them you now have leverage against science again. And you think they're going to hold this show restraint. They are not. They are going to be like, oh, it's payback time. And they will come after him. And that will just be the beginning. They'll go after evolution. They'll go after the Big Bang Theory. They'll go after all astrophysics. They'll go after everything. Yeah. And so it's a short meeting. So why would you, why would you keep this thing a secret? That's why. Uh, potential. Uh, the people in power don't like chaos if they, unless they control it. And okay. that's what you're talking about here. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Shelby, did you want to get him with one? Um, I kind of want to talk about um, gravity. Ah. So you, that is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do you believe that gravity exists? Yes. Or you do? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's not, again, it's one of those common things that um, people throw out about the, the flat Earth community. One is that we're in this giant flat space asteroid, which makes no sense. Because we don't believe in space, period. You know, mm -hmm. snow log could be just sitting on your desk. You don't need space. Could you talk, actually, could you talk a little bit about that? Now oh, that oh yeah, 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 sure. So space. if it is yeah. this, if you are right. living in a in a building and structure, 
Yes. You don't need anything else. It's that easy. Meaning, um, you got to remember the, the globe model needs a huge amount of support to keep it going. You need a solar system with a sun. You need a galaxy around that and a universe around that. And you need a huge amount of geometry and trigonometry and quantum mechanics and calculus and all this other crap. Whereas this thing, you need nothing. You need some algebra, maybe a little bit of geometry, but not much. Um, mm -hmm. And as far as gravity goes, the, the common misconception is that we don't believe in gravity. It's not that at all. But it's not just gravity that keeps things going. Um, in fact, you're leading scientists. You can ask any scientist in, in your university. It's, they'll say, give me a, a definition of gravity. They won't be able to. They will say, no, we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you the symptoms of it. You know, you, you drop something, right? You know, yeah. it falls. You can do this all day long. We can do that. Oh, it, it proves that something's happening. But they'll say, well, it's this magical, in, invisible molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a globe. Really, it's not that much different than what I believe. I think it's a magical molecular force that pulls things straight down to some sort of flat surface. But if it is this, if it is pressurized, you know, if it is, that's a, the big thing is a pressurized system, then it's not just gravity. It's also density, buoyancy, which means um, you, you take a volleyball or a water polo ball. Do you have water polo in your university? Probably. Yeah, yeah you, pu you push it down. Why does it pop back up? Well, because of density. You know, the, the air is, is, is less dense than the water around it, so it's going to pop back up. And if you filled it with helium, it would just keep going. So what's my point there? My point is um, pressure and density factor into a lot of this. Here here's goes to your gravity question. What is more powerful, gravity or vacuum? It's a vacuum all day long. Gravity cannot ever win against a vacuum. Uh, when you take a straw and you suck a soda out of a glass, why didn't gravity keep that soda in the glass? Well, it's all because your mouth was stronger than, than the gravity that was holding that down. Take that one step further. Let's say there's a second floor to your building right now, right? And you turn that into a small vacuum chamber with a cork in the ceiling right now. You pop it. What happens? You know what's going to happen. It's going to be instant. It's going to be violent. It's, it's no different than blowing up a balloon and letting it go. It's always going to run off because the air is going to try to get out of that thing. And you're going to say, what's your point? My point is, why didn't gravity keep the air in your room right now? Why did it go upstairs? Well, because vacuum always wins. Always. No, you look up some wonderful videos on YouTube. Uh, one is called, um, the Germans love doing this. I don't know why. They get a weird fascination for, from it. Um, gravity versus a steel, I'm sorry, vacuum versus a steel rail car. Take a steel rail car, apply a vacuum field to the inside of it. It's just instant. It's like a freaking monster just crushed it. Just like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. It's not like the movies. The movies, you're dead. <laughs> I don't know. Any movie you watch, it's like, we're running out of air. Get the suits. <laughs> you're dead. The only reason they let the people live is because they, they just take license, dramatic license. So it here's the question. Better so, so if gravity didn't keep the air in your room right now, instead of going upstairs, then why is there air outside? Mm -hmm. You're going to come back and you're going to say, oh, gravity. It's like, oh, no, no, no. Same gravity. Same, exact same gravity. Then it's in your room that's 20 feet outside. So why doesn't the vacuum of space just rip our atmosphere completely off? And you say, there is no answer. And science will not be able to tell you. Uh, they'll say, in fact, you can come back and say, where exactly is the edge of space? You've all heard that term, right? Where does our yeah. atmosphere end and vacuum begin? It absolutely defies what thermodynamics is, which is you can't have pressure next to non-pressure without a barrier. Enter barrier. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what it is. You're, then the reason why it works, the only reason it works is because of the pressurized system. So does gravity, is gravity, yes. Does gravity exist? Yeah. Is it just part of the equation? Yeah, it's a two-part. Okay, so what is that barrier in the flat Earth model? Like, what is it made what is it of? Made out like... of? Yeah. <sighs> Come on, man. Uh, okay. Well, no, 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 no. It's no. Yeah, I know you have to ask, but for us, for me, oh my God, it's one of I don't know ten things that it could be. Um, it could be high frequency. It could be a force field. Could it be a unified field? Could it be a heavy element? Could it be a heavy water? Uh, could it be something unknown? All, all I know is that we tried to bust through it for four years. The United States and Soviet Union mm -hmm. hit it with everything they had from 68 until um, 72. Wait, was that right? No, sorry. Wow, back up, wrong decade. 59 through 62. 68 and uh, it was four years. It doesn't really matter. They both shut down at the same time. They were using megaton weapons back in you know, the early shots, and then they used um, medium range um, kiloton weapons. 
So the question is, if, if, if atomic weapons can't get through it, whatever it is, is extremely, it's something we haven't seen, we don't know about. Because atomic weapons can vaporize anything that we make, literally mm -hmm. vaporize any element that we have. So my guess is it's an element or an energy field that we haven't, we don't have the, the engineering to do. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, some of these questions you just gotta ask. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure, it, it, sure again, I get the, I get that question all the time. Right. It's like, look, I don't know, but I can tell you, I mean, if you if you watch enough science fiction, you're gonna have some ideas about it. Whatever it is, it's engineering, the engineering capabilities. Whoever built this was not us. <laughs> and yeah. whoever it is is really, really powerful and really, really old. So I wouldn't mess with well, it. Yeah, I guess you touched on that. Who would you, I guess, assume that it's God or like what, who? Well, you can go down one of two paths, well, but, but but really you're just splitting hairs because yeah. you could say, well, it's either one of two things. It's either an older civilization that's much more powerful than ourselves. Mm -hmm. Not a big shock. You know, we've written about that in science fiction forever. Or it's a deity. And again, you know, I'm not going to name God in this case because there are five major religious houses. So the yeah. thing is, though, you're really just splitting hairs because one man's ancient civilization is another man's deity. If a giant golden spaceship just parked itself somewhere, you know, and, and 10 foot tall blue people came out. Oh, yeah, there'd be some people. It's like, oh, wow, they are like Avatar. But there's other people that would actually start a church like immediately. They'd be like, we must bow down and serve the blue people. You know, it's like gather yeah. hey, around everyone. And that's how it would start. That's funny. Um, um, so I'm a little bit confused of how like other planets are involved in this uh, dome. Planets. So, uh, <laughs> so how do you how do you explain like other planets like Jupiter and stuff like that? No, no, it's fine. Uh, okay, and again, the the only reason you're even asking that question is because you've been reinforced like everybody else that space, you know. It's like space is a thing. We, I mean, it's amazing. In fact, since we've been doing this for the last five years, every single day there's a new space story. It's, a, it's basically a drumbeat. Yeah. And they don't care, just so you know, they don't care if you even read the title as long as you look at the image. I mean, they, you might glance at the title, but it's like, look, there's something new about the spot on Jupiter. Hey, there's a face on Mars. Hey, there's something on the top of Saturn. They don't care about that. All they care about is if you're thinking about Jupiter, you're thinking you're on a globe and everything else. The planets, do the planets look spherical? Yes, they do. Are they actually spherical? Yeah, they might be. Can you land on them? No, not a chance. They're just lights on a ceiling. Um, I don't know if Tennessee has a, um, the University of Tennessee has a planetarium, but if you ever get a chance, I think we do. Yeah. Go and, and stare at these things because, you know, the, 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 new, the new planetariums, if they have a decent projection system, are really quite good. And, you know, you see the planets and the stars and, me and meteors and you can even see the moon going overhead. So the question is like, oh, wow, does the moon look spherical? Yeah, it does. Can you land on it? No. And, and I say, why not? And you say, well, because it's just an image on the ceiling. And I go, yeah. yeah. Who's to say when you walk out of that building, you're just not in a much, much bigger building? That's all we're talking about here. I mean, you could take, let's face it, you could take people from 100 years ago, put them in that planetarium, you know, blindfold them and put them in there. They'd think they were looking at the night sky. You could tell them anything you want. It's like, oh, that's absolutely the night sky. They'd believe it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So who's to say that you can't fool a whole population if you didn't, you know, if you wanted to. Don't forget that the technology we have now is still really, really limited. Yeah, we're talking on cool stuff right now. But yeah, we've, cool. we, 20 years ago, we didn't even have HD television, right? And people like, and 20 years ago, the internet was really, really slow. <laughs> so what, imagine what would happen and where the, what we have at 4K televisions right now. Imagine if you had the technology to build a million K television, what you could do with that. So mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, everything you would see up in the sky, short version is everything up in the sky is just part of a pretty, pretty display system. And the most, the oldest clock ever built. Really, that's all it is. It's a pretty, pretty clock. Okay, cool. Um, I think, yeah, so let's talk about the sun. I did a little research on the, uh, I guess, Flat Earth Society website. Oh, don't look at them. Just so you know, the Flat Earth Society, okay. that's a good thing you brought it. I'm glad you brought this up, has nothing to do with anybody that has any work uh, on social media right now. For some reason, the original Flat Earth Society, which was around, been around for a long time, and, and kind of kept up when it was when the internet was going on, 
But then they just, for whatever reason, just went dormant and nobody did anything until about 2015 when we decided, you know, people in social media, we were just going to do stuff on our own. And yeah. in fact, um, no, I don't even know. We've done, I don't know how many different conferences in different countries and meetups. I've never actually met someone from the Flatter Society. Everybody that's, that's anybody that's doing anything is, is all social media based. So if they are 1.0, we're 2.0. We don't even talk to them. So okay. I, I literally don't okay. know anything, anybody in it. Well, I'll just scratch that question then. No, it's, uh, all right. it's all good. It was about like the sun being. It was oh, no, like you, can, you can still, well, whatever they say on their website, it doesn't really matter to us because we started from scratch. We did okay. not use them as a resource. In fact, they were the ones that, that said that, uh, that, that, you know, some of them were saying that flat earth is actually a disc in space that's simulating gravity by traveling upwards at nine meters per second per second. We never, nobody I know goes into that at all. It's like, look, okay. it's it's a self-contained thing and what's outside it, whatever it is, it's not space. What, why? Okay. What did they say about the sun? I haven't heard anything. Well, I was just what I was going to talk about. Yeah, they, go ahead. Uh, web, uh, it just was saying that it was accelerated up due to the dark energy, but then also I was just going to talk about the sun being 3,000 miles away and 32 miles in diameter by their model. Oh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Actually, that that part, I mean, we don't disagree with everything that they do. But, yeah, we actually came up with that on our own, which is the sun okay. is sun and the moon are very small. Um, they're less than 50 miles wide. Do we know the exact dimensions? Of course not. Um, and how high up are they? I mean, the, the atomic weapon tests were capping out at 400 kilometers. Could this thing, you know, could this thing be pushing 3,000 kilometers high? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, whatever it is. In fact, the, the arc of this is probably way diminished because it would be really, really shallow. It would look like a shallow sports stadium because, remember, um, most of our technology, commercial airlines cap out at not even 10 miles high. Spy planes, yeah. maybe twice that. So you, even if the ceiling was only four or 500 miles high, we'd never reach it. Well, the civilian market would never reach it, which NASA comes into play afterwards. We, we might get it to that or maybe not. Okay. Well, I guess. Um, so as a flat earther, do you dispel, I guess, all science or do you like accept, I don't know, like, so for instance, nuclear science, like how the sun works or like, no, 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 not at all. Uh, well, uh, okay. Any couple, there's a couple things there. We should probably clarify. I love science, always did. Everybody that gets into the flat earth, you know, I, I was a techie, you know, in tech support for years and years and years. So I think science is great. Science took, li but science is corruptible like anybody else. You know, uh, mm -hmm. they, they have made decisions and taken leaps of faith and made statements that are very, very broad that they shouldn't have. So like when Neil Tyson says that science is true, whether or not you believe in it, yeah well that's not that's not accurate at all because science is only true until the day it's not they make statements mm -hmm. and basically what they they don't they used to say this is our best guess <laughs> now they don't say that anymore it's like this is how it is <laughs> stamp <laughs> and that's it and it's like okay which is why in my speech um last year i talked about the the stupid coelacanth fish which is a, a great example. It's a fossilized fish extinct for 70 million years. And every scientist in the world, every single one of them would have bet the freaking farm that, that was absolutely accurate. It's like, we got the fossils. It's obviously jibes are carbon dating, blah, blah, blah. Dead, 70 million years. It's like, great. Yeah. So why did the British government just catch one off of South Africa and then another one off of Madagascar and Mozambique and the National Geographic <laughs> swimming around with them, taking movies? It's like, how, how did you get it that wrong? How did you screw this up that bad? And they said, well, uh, we, we don't know. It's a, it's a living fossil and it's in an evolutionary state of stasis. And they just started making up terms. So the question is, well, how did they screw it up? They screwed up because they saw that they don't ever recheck their own work. You all right there? You got, you got the virus? You really I should. Hope, oh, no, I hope not. Don't no. say that. You're just talking to her on the screen. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it could be transmitted via email too. <laughs> the, uh, no, no, no. So, so the, so here's the thing. So how they get that wrong? It's because they rarely check the, the original work. All scientists build on each other's work and they assume that whoever came before them was absolutely right. Okay. So yeah. do I believe do, science makes mistakes? Everybody knows this. And then they, they kind of backpedal and, and do have to do things later where they take massive leaps is when it comes to astrophysics. 
massive, massive, massive leaps, which is why in my clues, and I don't know if you watched them, when I talk about the core of the earth, it's like, it, here's the thing. If the average person can physically verify most of the data, great, fantastic. Boiling temperature of water at sea level, great. Do that all day long. Tell me what the core of the earth looks like. And, and, yeah. and it's like, okay, uh, you know, you've got these wonderful cross sections with perfect 1000 mile bands of red and orange and yellow and white. It's like, how'd you get that? And it's like, uh, what? It's like, how'd you get that diagram? And, and cause the deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles ever. And we, no one can get past eight miles for whatever reason. I don't care if it's magma or not. You still can't get past eight miles. So how are you showing this cross section? And not only that, you're showing us the cross section of Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune and, and planets that are outside the soil. How are you showing us this? And, and then if you look in the fine print, they say, oh, well, we're just extrapolating. We're making an estimated guess. It's like, so you don't know. It's like, no, we don't. The thing is, science doesn't like putting question marks in textbooks. They don't do it. The, the globe, if you believe in the globe, should be this, this giant question mark on the inside of it. They won't do that because they don't want people to bug them with questions. So they mm -hmm. just say, this is our best guess. That's it. We're leaving. <laughs> and that's it. We just, we're just revisiting this. So again, <clears throat> science. So when you talk about the thermal nuclear reaction of the sun, forget about that. Tell me how they got the size of the sun. Yeah. Tell, tell me they did. Geometry? They, if you look it up, you go back in the history books, they got the size. They just guessed. They, they said, well, sticks and shadows, well, it's got to be 93 million miles away, and it's got to be a thermal nuclear reaction that's been continuing for blah, blah, blah. It's like, do you know? You didn't even have telescopes that could even look. I mean, you know, the, clo the closest nearby star is supposedly four light years away, which is, by the way, a ridiculous distance. People don't even know. I mean, the distances they talk about the universe even Carl Sagan, you know, the old sage, yeah. you know, even he was the first to say, wow, universe doesn't make sense because it's so fucking <coughs> empty. If you believe the distances. Yeah, it's empty. And we don't say it's empty. We say it's not even there. It's just this painting on a ceiling that we just start yeah. making stuff up. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, I guess you do get kind of just familiar with the distances they throw out. Like it's just, you know, like light years. Light and stuff years. That... Do you know how I mean here? It, if you believe their distances, the only the reason they say light years is because if they try to do it in miles, it becomes you just start getting dizzy. Uh, mm -hmm. I get it, like they say light, they say light is one hundred eighty six thousand miles a second, right? They, the reason they have to say that is because if you go up one notch, to, it's seven hundred twenty million miles an hour. That number means nothing to anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I even I even question the speed of light as it is because of what we do in simulations we, you know i that that i do question i was like speed of light really where, where are you getting that from exactly yeah how so tell me about that i guess speed of light um the speed of, i mean we've all heard speed of light since like i guess since yeah. we were in the eighth, eighth grade probably oh yeah yeah, like, yeah speed of light for me you got you gotta remember i'm a big believer in um simulation theory i mean yeah i start off with flat earth because people flat earth resonates with people because for whatever reason, we can't, we have a really hard time explaining simu simulations that we're building now. We have a mm -hmm. hard time explaining to people uh, for whatever reason, you know, people play games, you know, you, you, you have your friends, you play GTA and Fortnite and Minecraft and all that stuff. Oh, and by yeah. the way, those games are built. This is what, this is a big key here. Those games are built on completely flat surfaces. They're boxes. In fact, it's not even a dome. It's just a big box it's like a cake box with, with a shallow ceiling. In fact, the, the sky is not even a, um, a circle. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's called a skybox system, um, which they simulate into a circle. And the reason is because computers can't draw circles. You say, no, computers can't draw. No, no, they can't. In fact, you, if you look at it, why is a pixel a square? It's because that's the only thing you can tell a computer to do. It's like right angles. That's all, that's all it is. So when it comes to the speed of light, uh, I question it because we can simulations, we can make light any, do anything we want. And light is instantaneous in simulations as well, to the point where the speed of light means nothing in it. Mm -hmm. So tell, again, when, when people talk about, you know, when people's, they, I'm digressing here. But when astrophysicists start just going off into the weeds about w with all these numbers, they're losing their audience because the audience think, well, these guys obviously are smarter than me. So I'm just going to let them just talk about it. So when they talk yeah. about, you know, the oldest question there is, you know, like the Big Bang, right? <laughs> what, what, what came before the Big Bang? 
Well, it was a really, really big bang. It's like, yeah, 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 I got that part. <laughs> it was really, really fast. What happened before it? And they're not going to answer it. They Even they have their own creation story, and now they're working on dark matter. There's physicists all over the place that are trying to fill in the gaps of dark matter. It's an absolute, yeah. it's an even worse theory than gravity, you know, which is, it's like they're literally just trying to make it up because they don't know. There's so much in the, the universe, their perceived universe, that doesn't make sense. They just keep <laughs> trying to add things to it to, to make the math add up. It's like, why? Why? You're never going to get, you, you know, even even the best case, we haven't even gone to Mars, for God's sakes. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you even believe, believe the moon story, by the way, that's a whole, uh, I could go in so many different directions. But here's yeah. one for you, which is, so the Americans went to the moon, right? Yeah. 19, or, they, last trip was 1972. Mm -hmm. Why didn't anybody go back? Ever. From anywhere. It's expensive. The, expensive really no competition no space agencies it's 2020 and, yeah. and and here's the other thing you could look up there's wonderful compilations every president since reagan has says we were going back since reagan it's like we're committed to going back in the moon next term we're committed to going back to the moon clinton <clears throat> next bush obama trump they're all saying it why hasn't anyone gone back because there's they can't they can't fake it they, they tried and the the in fact i could give you here let me let me give you something real quick while you're thinking of your next question one second you will like this surrogate files 20. i gotta get you yeah look at uh, you'll i'll probably lose you for one second when i do this but but i got it <laughs> hang on Hang on, uh, moon curve. Okay, so what? Here, take a look at this. I just dropped this in your. It, I'm going to lose you for one second when it when it uploads. Okay, so that's a shot. This is just a random shot from Apollo 12, right? Here's the yeah. reason why nobody's yeah. been back to the moon. I can see at least half a dozen things wrong with this this image, and you could do it too. And that's just a straight up NASA image, right? Nothing special about it, right? Two two member two astronauts on the moon at a given time. So what's wrong with this? Well, forget about the stars. We, we won't even go into the stars thing. The fact there aren't any stars yeah. anywhere from any of the shots ever. They say, and, and camera guys will come back. Well, it's the exposure settings. You know, they had they had to shoot it like that. For so it's like so they didn't take a roll and and set it to the right settings to, to actually shoot stars because if there's an atmosphere. It would be the most beautiful set, setting of stars ever. Yeah. <sighs> Shadows only go in one direction if there's one light source being the sun. But the shadows are going in four directions in this. And this is not a time-lapse shot. There's no blast crater underneath that, that module. There should be. Um, the VHF transmitter, that little satellite dish, that's from 1969, right? It has a range of maybe 50 miles. And that's Morse code, 50 miles. And they supposedly did 10 frames of color video a second with two-way communication, with pinpoint accuracy, with no distortion whatsoever, never in a million years. Uh, the astronaut suit, one of my favorites, it, that also defies the laws of physics. Uh, because yeah. remember, why isn't it? Why doesn't an astronaut suit turn into a basketball? Meaning, you know, pressure. And you can look up at any video you want online. Anything in a vacuum chamber. It, if it's a soft container, it goes rigid and then it eventually explodes. You know, no mm -hmm. different than a basketball. So yeah. why does that astronaut, have, can he move his elbows and knees and fingers? Why can he bounce around? Why did he turn into a parade float and tip over and die? No one ever, ever talks about it. Ever, ever, ever. And it just goes on and on and on. There's all sorts of fun things. And that's just one freaking photo. That's why no one's been back to the moon. It's because the, the photos from the 60s have aged so terribly that they don't know what to do. Sorry, I go off. I go up. I'm, you, keep no, keep me on point here. All, you have a list of questions. Go. This, oh no, we don't. We're about at the end of questions anyway. So really, you're just. Oh, I'm just. Free, I'm just little, freelancing. Yeah. Check me on the topic. We appreciate it. Okay. Uh, well, no, no, no. It's fine. I mean, uh, an another thing. Um, think about this. The, it's the stuff. It's sometimes it's not the stuff that we show people. It's the stuff that's left out. So, for example, uh, you, you you know anyone that scuba dives. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually. Okay, perfect. What's the only thing that scuba divers care about? Air. That's all I care about. They look at their, their gauge. It's like, how much air do I have left? How much air? They're constantly checking that. And mm -hmm. at some point, it's like, well, it's less than 10 minutes. I got to get the hell out of here. And then they leave. Find me a single audio clip or video clip of any astronaut seeing, saying how much air they have left. 
Uh, how did it happen? There's no, I forget about the, the vacuum part. It's like no, no astronaut even cared how much air they had. They had an unlimited supply of air constantly running around, building their car, playing golf, jumping up and down, setting up the flag. No one cared. It's like, it's like, Hey, Fred, I got 13 minutes of air left. I think I'm going to go back to the lander. No one ever talks about it ever. And it's like in 1969, are you kidding? If you land on the moon, that's the part that just drove me insane. If you land on the moon, you're looking back at Earth. The only thing you care about is not dying. <laughs> that's it. You look at it, it's like, how do I get back? Holy smokes, I'm freaking out. That's all you're going to do is, is you're going to care about not dying. And yet that never, ever, ever happened. Um, yeah. The moon missions, to, and again, remember, we didn't, We yeah, we were the ones that tore into the moon missions more than most. But even the Americans... Um, started tearing into them like immediately afterwards. It was the nerds, yeah. you know, the super nerds looking. It's like, wow, I, I, that geometrically doesn't line up at all, you know. And and but and so people started making fun of this ever since the '70s. But until the internet came out, it didn't really get spread. So that's what we mm -hmm. tear into first. We go after NASA and we say, which is why I do the spacesuit thing. I go, if the spacesuit is wrong, if it's absolutely an engineering nightmare, then anything that ever shows a spacesuit is wrong, which means everything. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, do you remember when the, I guess, when they actually went to the moon? Because I'm assuming you were a child or... Uh, I, I was just, just born, but thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, my dad... Oh, was yeah, back in the day. So. Oh, you think, I, right, I think I knew Lincoln? Come on. <laughs> uh, blue and the gray. Brother versus brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you have any more for each other? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. The... No, let me let me tell let me tell you about the moon mission though. The, the okay. here's here's the reason why it worked. The the moon mission was brilliant, and you can look up some other things on the on the moon mission, like the early spacesuits that they tested were these huge, rigid metal and plastic things. Because again, mm -hmm. they they knew what would happen with a vacuum, and but they were really clunky. They looked like movie nightmares. You know, it's like you know, be you couldn't walk in them. Let alone, it's like how are we going to get them into a spacecraft? These things are never going to work. And then someone comes along and they say, you know what? Give them a soft spacesuit. Really? How are we going to do that? It's like nobody knows anything about physics. And it's true. You, nobody knows anything about physics. It's like no one's going to know. We'll, we'll be able to do it. Put it on television. They'll buy it. It'll totally work. And it did. That was brilliant. It was a huge risk, but absolutely ru it worked because, again, you guys <coughs> not withstanding, um, the average person on the street knows nothing about physics, engineering, chemistry, any of the major sciences. They know nothing about these mm -hmm. things. So like the, the moon thing, the shadows. I, again, it's something you have to revisit. It's like shadows going. You wouldn't even think about that if you do it. You wouldn't even think about that. No, if you, you were wouldn't. It's like it. shadows only go in one direction. It's like, oh wow, yeah. So why are they going in four directions? It's like, I don't know. It's like, well, they shouldn't. <laughs> it's only one of two answers. Either there's a light source. They brought their own stage lighting and they put it right behind them, which makes total sense. Or um, the the light source is really really close, you know, and that's it. And so they it's you, it was filmed on a stage. It was absolutely brilliant. And we bought it because it's on television. We have a huge disconnect. And now it's much worse because your generations, uh, you know, whatever's on your smartphone, whatever's coming across. I mean, you guys give yeah, legitimacy to people that have a million subs on YouTube. Complete legitimacy to them. You know, you, you, you'll give more credit to freaking PewDiePie. I know he's older. But then, uh, then you will an anchor at CNN that's been doing it for 20 years. Why? Well, because PewDiePie's got 100 million subs. Well, you know he can buy subs, right? You know, he can you can buy this. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. He's totally legit. And it's like, eh, maybe. So. That is, that is just the society nowadays. All right, this is the last one okay. that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to let you go. We appreciate you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, joining us. Uh, so, Michelson and Morley experiment. Tell me what about God, me about the Michelson Morley experiment. Uh, also, you could also, if you're going to look up that one, you could look up um, Aries failure, which is mm -hmm. right along those lines, because they both tried to prove the same thing. In fact, I like a Aries failure better, but but Michael Morks is fine. Um, but let me, I like a Aries failure because of what they said, what he said at the end, which was they were trying to prove the ether. They were trying yeah. to prove that you know, it was kind of like the early versions of dark matter, actually. There, that, that we were flying through space and you could measure the cosmic winds that were going by and therefore prove that there was some sort of, we were traveling through this weird space ether. And neither of them did it. They, they were going, well, that doesn't make any damn sense. The experiments failed miserably. In fact, Aries' failure was interesting because he said, 
he was a quote that he had. I'm going to butcher the quote, but it's something to this effect. Either I fa he said, either I failed or the earth's not moving. And he goes, but we all know that's silly because the earth is moving. So I had to have failed. And then it's like, because he made that assumption. Again, we're talking about one of the early scientists. It's like, well, he assumed that the earth was moving through space. But since, it's, but since he failed his experiments, like, well, he, he assumed that that was a given, that that was absolutely the a concrete fact. And it's like, no, it's not. So he didn't fail at all. You know, mm -hmm. he, so yeah, when, when to accept his evidence that he got. Yeah, I mean, in fact, it, there's so many. I mean, there's so many other people that have kind of hinted at it, that uh, like Nikola Tesla has said that um, this this world is is more of a realm than anything else, which I thought was interesting. Of course, his work was disputed for a long, long time, and he's a weird guy to begin with. So his credibility, yeah. who knows. But yeah, it's it's a strange concept, and I don't know. I mean, I know why it's resonating. I know why it keeps getting bigger and bigger, because we figured out a way to explain the world that's easier than the solar system model, and people love easy, plain and simple. I mean, it is you know the, this is way way easier to explain. It's like well, and people have come back so like just because it's easier doesn't mean it's right. It's like well, no, but if it makes sense to people, then it will become right. And, and yeah. that scares the hell out of science because they don't know what to what to do with that. And so, like, look, it's just the way it is. Like, you made the the, the solar system and everything so complex that we're just stepping in and saying, look, could be this. Why not? Back to makes more sense like like this. And that's why it just keeps rolling along. Um. Well, I guess that's a. Uh, oh, actually, wait. Do you know about LIGO, the uh, gravitational wave thing? Oh my God, that that dog like, that, show. that is a Michelson and Morley experiment, just like really. To yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. look into. Yeah, I, I watched some of that. Look into the details surrounding that, because you remember they were up for funding renewal just before their observations were detected. And as you know, again, not to say that scientists are corrupt, but things happen yeah. for the money. And that is like, wait, our funny's gonna get. If someone comes to you, and, and again, you can you can talk to scientists and pose this question to them, and they'll be like, uh, which is, if someone comes to you and says our funding is gonna get pulled until unless we can discover gravitational waves really really soon. What do you think is going to happen? Are you, you're yeah. either going to do the, the right thing and say, well, never did figure that one out. And, and, and you know, then you lose your, your funding. I mean, come on. Sci <laughs> scientists need Porsches, too. And that's what we're really talking about here. I mean, scientists will. I'm not saying that, that all of science is corrupt. No, they're, they're better than business and politics and sports and entertainment and journalism. But come on. They, they cut corners for the money. As, as many times, I mean, again, you know, lead paint, lead gasoline, DDT, all the variations of DDT, uh, asbestos, which is a great pot product, unless you work in the factory, then it's not so great. Um, cig cigarettes, I mean, come on. It wasn't that yeah. long ago that scientists took the money <laughs> and published papers saying, ah, cigarettes are fine, totally fine. <laughs> So, no, no. Anyone that the gravitational waves thing, in fact, they retracted it um, not that long afterwards, after they got the funding. <laughs> they got the funding. It's like, well, our our revised results weren't exactly good. So you lied. <laughs> you lied to get the funding, but, you know, they weren't going to take the money back. It's like, well, we'll mm -hmm. get it this next time. It's like, yeah, sure you will. Sure you will. <laughs> So, all right. Well, Mark, do you have anything else for me? I know, I'm good. Mark, you've been awesome. We appreciate oh, it. Oh, no, no, um, no. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And um, if you need any other resources uh, or memes or images, do you want me to send you like a. a yeah, you got to send me your best memes. I'm going to have to see that. <laughs> okay. I'll, well, I'll send you, the, um, I'll send you the, the slideshow collection I got and I'll send it right after I hang up and then you can do with it what you want. Awesome. Mark, you've been awesome. I appreciate it. And I'll get in touch. I'll let you know uh, when we're done with our presentation. I'll send you a copy. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. See ya.